from the Natomas Garden and Arts Club. Uh, and I have another little presentation. Today, I'm going to show you how to make holiday wreaths or just wreaths in general for any occasion. So without further ado, I want to um, share my screen and show you what I've got to present to you here. So let's talk about holiday wreaths, wreaths for any occasion. Doesn't have to be Christmas anymore. Possibilities are endless. Um, and really you gotta narrow it down. So let's talk about choosing a theme. Um, you really do need to figure out what you're gonna make before you start making. You can either go with your simple and your traditional wreaths. You can use real or fake foliage, uh, or you could use anything you like, really. The possibilities are really endless. So let's start with a hint. Um, what you want to do is uh, base the theme of your wreath on the person that you are making it for. So these are intended to be gifts from the heart. Um, so take a second to reflect on a person's hobbies, their history, uh, things that you share together in common, the relationship that you share, the things that make a wreath, a wreath, um, it must be round. Uh, I think there's another word for something if it's square, but it won't be a wreath. And it's got to be decorative. They're supposed to be ornamental, uh, laid originally on gravestones, but put on front doors. And um, it should be meaningful. You want to try to find something that's going to, to be significant in a way. So I'm going to show you, first of all, how to make a basic grapevine wreath. Now, this grape is in my front yard, and it needs pruning. So I pruned off one long vine, and I wound it into a really nice wreath. And it took all of five minutes to do. Um, so cut your vines. This is actually not um, not a an eating grape. This one here I cut from a, a, a volunteer wild grape of some kind that's growing on the side of the house. It needed to be cut back anyways. So I took the the vine and um, step one, you cut your vine and step two is you remove your leaves and then you move it along and step three is just you wind it back and forth in itself. What I do is I start in the middle. So you'll see that I put one end inside the other at about the center point. And that's just because you don't want to end up winding a long end. So this way you just cut the length in half. And so you go in and out and around, in and out and around. And the little tendril things that um, make them so attractive make them also very difficult to to wind around, but you want to get a nice tight wind um, and try to find a vine that's going to be probably six to eight feet in length so that when you, well, depending on what size, I mean, if you've got a really short vine, just make a smaller wreath, like the one that was in the picture before was about a 14 inch diameter, and this one here is about an eight inch diameter. It's also a, a, a thinner um, gauge on the vine. So it is um, a little bit um, um, thinner when, when you wrap it around. So this I'm showing you the one end all finished. And now I'm starting on the other end. I wanna kind of catch the first end in there as I start with the second end. And then the side two goes around and around. And these um, windings are a little tighter as I go, I usually do the, the fat end of the vine first, and then the thin end of the vine um, will be the final wrap. And as I go with the thin end of the vine, I wrap tighter and tighter, closer, um, my loops are closer into each other. And then with the final wrap, what I wanna do is um, try to tuck in the ends. So you'll see here, I'm trying to take the first end 
and make sure that it gets soundly wrapped. And there's a way to do it. You put it in between, and you see I didn't do that right, but you put it in between the two um, vines and secure it and then give it a wrap. And that will hold it in there nice and tight for you. And then um, the tendrils that are there, you can use them. Um, they usually come off in a Y shape and you can take one and wrap one this way and one that way and help to knot it together. So you just continue winding around until you get to the end of it. It really takes all of about maybe five minutes. Tuck your end in um, and you can cut off loose ends or like here I'm kind of trying to cram it into the bottom there. But um, it, they're very decorative. And uh, you'll see some of the vines on the right. I left the leaves on. Um, I, m I imagine that they will continue to, to change color and to dry. Um, and it'll firm up as it goes. So that is a uh, grapevine wreath. And another kind of easy wreath to make is a greenery wreath. And you can use the the bottom of your Christmas tree, the lowest branches when you cut them off so that you can fit it into your Christmas tree stand. Um, these came off of an ornamental landscaping cypress that like the grapevines was needing to be trimmed anyways. And I used these coat hangers I bought from Target and they were like um, six for six for six coat hangers for $4. And I like them because they're wrapped in cloth. Um, and so they're already uh, slightly decorative. And then you'll see I've got my pruning clippers, my wire cutters, and wire to attach the greenery. So this uh, video is um, time lapse. So it goes a little faster than the last one, which was just a straight video. But you're taking smaller um, sections of the greenery and taking a round straight piece of foliage and curving it along the uh, circular edge of the rounded coat hanger. Now, I took the coat hanger and I made it into a round shape by putting my foot into it and bending it to uh, a round shape. So that's the wire coat, hang uh, the wire and the green wreaths. Let's talk about things that you can do to make your wreath special. Um, you can make your wreath colorful or decorative by adding fake foliage or real foliage, ribbons and bows, little Christmas gifts, um, small tree ornaments. Um, you can use dried fruit or cinnamon sticks. Um, I like to use found objects. I have oh, gads and gads of these things I call minions. Um, you, I have... Uh, uh, all kinds of things. I've got dinosaurs, I've got uh, Mickey Mouse characters, I've got um, uh, uh, electronic gadgets, I've got lapel buttons and real buttons, I've got um, coming down here, if anybody can tell me what this is, I could give you a prize for that, but I've got keys, um, there are small photo ornaments, seashells, hot wheels, you could use sunglasses, wine corks. Um, what you want to do is find something that is thematic and meaningful to the individual that the wreath is being made for, or maybe something that symbolizes you um, and you know, or the relationship that you have together. Um, but you want to um, take your time. And these things, I find most of these things at the thrift store, but I'm sure you've got lots of them lying around the house. I mean, old sunglasses, old wine corks, really, uh, cookie cutters. Um, there's the possibilities are endless, but you want to find your little add ons that are the same scale as the wreath that you make. So the smaller wreaths um, that are made out of the grapevines. Um, you would use a smaller thing. And if you're doing one of the larger ones that's made out of the greenery, you can use ribbons, bows, and Christmas decorations. Um, and you want to find at least one, um, and as many as will fit. You could even 
use them instead of the greenery. I picture sunglasses going all the way around the perimeter. But like I said, possibilities are endless. Um, and that's all I have about wreaths. If you have questions or comments, you can email to me at a tokuhama at natomasgac.org or you can go to our website, natomasgac.org and my contact information is there. Um, and I hope you have fun making wreaths and I hope you're enjoying your holidays. I'll see you guys next time.